Good morning. It is morning to me. It is um, 7.33 early. Got my coffee. Part of that was a joke. Part of that is that I'm wearing a white jersey. What's that? Portland thor thor Thorns? That's right. Today, we're going to be talking about the history of the National Women's Soccer League. There you go. Um, I didn't know if I should make this video um, informational or a rant about how I dislike people who don't like the National Women's Soccer League or just women's soccer in general. Uh, so I decided to do both. So um, you will see me transport into my car wearing this hat. I think one of them I'm not wearing a hat because I forgot. Also, this is a Houston Dash hat. Also, another National Women's Soccer League team. I support both because soccer and women. But yes, that's what this video is going to be about today. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I really liked reading about it and I really like soccer. I need to bring up the energy. Anyway, so the National Women's Soccer League is a spiritual successor, an actual successor, I don't know the difference. For another women's soccer league, it was the Women's United Soccer Association that sadly only lasted from 2001 to 2003. And then came along the Women's Professional Soccer, which lasted from 2007 to 2012, which also shut down. Then came the National Women's Soccer League, the league we all know and love today. See, I'm wearing my Houston Dash hat. Watch it. What you doing? If you like soccer, you watch soccer. You watch the National Women's Soccer League. It's like, but they're girls. They're not as girls. Shut your... Yeah. Shut up and watch it. It's a sport. It's soccer. If you like basketball, if you really, really love basketball, you're probably watching the NWBA. I'm not because I don't really care for um, basketball in general. But I really like soccer, so I watch the women play soccer. I had to move places because... Oh my gosh, the sun was killing me. But anyway, as you can see, um, women's soccer leagues weren't doing good. Um, they were failing, they were running out of money, which was the main problem. So the US Soccer Federation met with women's professional soccer teams, the W League, which ceased in 2015. My laptop's right here if you're wondering what I'm doing. And the Women's Premier Soccer League. And what they found is that if they really wanted a women's soccer league to thrive in America, they needed to keep costs down and really focus on sustainability above everything. So one way they decided to do that was that the U.S. Federation, the Canadian Federation, and the Mexican Federation would actually pay the salaries of their national team players on the National Women's Soccer League. I don't think I explained that well enough, so let me give you an example. Megan Rapino plays for OL Reign. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. The team team name's weird because they're not owned by somebody. They're owned by a, a, a league in France. Anyway, so Megan Rapino plays for them. OL Reign does not pay for Megan Rapino's salary. The US Federation pays for Megan Rapino's salary. So that's how that works because they wanted to be more sustainable so the leagues the federation said okay we'll pay for their salary so you can get the top class players and then we can expand women's soccer broader across the americas there's an ant on my iphone get off please and it's not like the mls or i also watch the mls it's not like the mls where I'm like oh why don't i just watch bundesliga series a um, I'm really moving this around, but it's intense. And uh, the Premier League, La Liga, those are all the very top. And MLS is below all of that, but I still watch it. So why, but it's not like, when you watch the National Women's Soccer League, it is the best women's soccer league. So watch it, you're watching the best of the best. The, the women, the American women, are the best women soccer team. And America sucks at soccer. We're really bad. We call it soccer. Everybody else doesn't call it. So we're whole, we're just disconnected from it. So the league began with eight teams. And those eight teams were the Boston Breakers, which 
sadly don't exist anymore. The FC Kansas City doesn't exist anymore. Western New York Flash, which still exists, but they are now the North Carolina Cor Courage, so they relocated. Um, Chicago Red Stars, good. Portland Thorns, yes. Um, Seattle Rain FC, which became OL Rain, so that's the team Mega Rapino plays for. Um, Sky Blue FC and West Washington Spirit. So what happened? What's happening in the early early years? They're focusing on sustainability. They're just trying to grow, and then there's an expansion team. The Houston Dash, which happens in 2014, then 2015 happens, and the women's national team wins. The, the U.S. women's national team wins the World Cup. The, the men could never, which got people more excited about women's soccer because it's awesome, of course. So then you saw the Orlando Pride become a team in 2016, then the Utah Royals FC. I said that real weird. Weird. I can't talk at all joined in 2018. So what does the future look like for the National Women's Soccer League? Good news, there is an expansion team already happening called, well, it was going to be called Proof Louisville FC, or Louisville. Um, proof as in the alcohol, yes. And if you're wondering, that kind of sounds, prob they, they realized it was problematic. And if you don't know why, well, Educate yourself. Ah, when it comes to expansion, got my book. FC Cincinnati also seems to be interested in an NWSL team. Also, Sacramento Republic of the USL is quote quote close to finalizing an agreement to join that um, to join. That was reported on October eighteenth, two thousand nineteen, and it is June eleventh. And last time I checked, nothing was finalized, and you know, everything's put on hold. But I didn't see anything about them going, no, not anymore. So it seems to still be a thing. So there's, hope there are two more cities that are interested in a National Women's Soccer League. Expansion, it's happening, it's cool. Expansion teams are fun. Las Vegas Golden Knights. And also, when it comes to TV deals, it's looking better for the National Women's Soccer League. Their TV deals have been kind of all over the place. I used to have to watch it on Yahoo Sports Network. Not even network, I just typed in Yahoo Sports and then I had to watch it on online. Which was nice because it was free, but it was the quality was terrible. What ended up happening with their TV deal? They have signed with CBS. And CBS will, and I quote, CBS itself will broadcast two matches, the league opener on April 18th and the league championship, while CBS Network will air 14 matches and 71 more can be found on CBS All Access, the network's subscribed streaming service, so like ESPN Plus, but CBS. And here's the really exciting part that I like, 24 matches will be able to be streamed on Twitch for free. So there you go, those 24 free matches you can watch. So when we're, we love being the best. We're all about year number one. Ah! So we have this, we have women's soccer and we're the best at it. So watch it and support them and love it. If you love soccer, you're gonna love it. You're not gonna get, if you watch the MLS, you're gonna love this. If you watch anything like soccer, you're gonna love it. Support the women, because they're kicking ass. This isn't the first network that the National Women's Soccer League sold the rights to play their games on. They originally had a deal with a a and but um, people didn't really watch it. Not because it's like, because it's women's soccer. Because nobody watches sports on A&E. But CBS makes sense, CBS has sports, CBS um, I don't think they have it anymore, thank goodness, the SEC, which is the most valuable college football conference. So, you know, CBS has sports already. It makes sense to put more sports on a network that has sports. Another thing they did, which I didn't know, they would make deals with people or networks like Fox Sports and ESPN halfway through the season. Like, can you hear this game, please? Which is weird. I didn't know that. They just did that. They just went, we got some games. You want to air our games? I'm not explaining it scholarly, which is what these glasses were supposed to do. I just found that funny. 
And if you're wondering how much CBS All Access cost, uh, so you can watch all your National Women's Soccer League games, it is six, no, it is five ninety nine a month. And you go, that's expensive. I'm like, yeah, but the, it's only like two or three months that they play. I mean, that's what I do with ESPN Plus. I like, oh, MLS is starting. Let me just pay for these few months and not keep it year round. So that's how much it costs if you really want it do it the people are like they should get paid more they need to get paid more and then people are like oh, it's not it's not equal though it's not equal because the men actually play less games and they get the money from revenue so really the, the women if they play the same amount of games and you just go off of revenue from tv deals and from people attending the game they don't the women will actually make less so the women have to play more and do more games to make the same amount of money which is what we're talking about because some of y'all can't watch them because they're like eh, it's not the same and then tv doesn't pay enough money for them because they're like oh people don't care about women's soccer when we freaking should because they're the best and we should be supporting them because we're america and we're number one and i see you're excited i see you're jumping yipping up and down on your seat But you're like, the sports is canceled right now. We got COVID, we got coronavirus. There's only like one major sports league playing, the Bundesliga and um, Korean baseball and Korean soccer. Anyway, the National Women's Soccer League is planning to become the first American professional league to get back into action. When? We're talking about June 27th, the Challenge Cup. Yeah, that's what it's called. The National Women's Soccer League will be having a tournament called the Challenge Cup. And tournaments are always fun. You love tournaments. You love going, you love watching Super Smash Bros and the, the brackets and the ladder and who wins, who advances. That's always fun. March Madness, incredible, exciting. I barely even care for basketball and I still kind of watch it. I will actually leave a link in the description so you can see all the games that were drawn and who's playing what who's playing when um, and you're like oh, I don't know what team to support you figure it out you can choose it because of the colors this is blue but the Houston Dash usually wear orange or because the thing the emblem you might be like that's a cool emblem usually whenever I pick my sports teams to support that are not from Louisiana I usually pick Houston just because it's the closest or if they're far away, I'm like, just, I just do this and like best stadium atmospheres, which is why I chose Dortmund in the Bundesliga in Newcastle from um, the Premier League and then Montreal Canadiens in hockey. But I ended up just choosing Portland Thorns because of stadium atmosphere, but also Houston Dash because it's right there. I can drive there and watch a game. I do it for the Major League Soccer too, right? the Houston Dynamo, they're right there, and also Portland Timbers, because that seems like a lot of fun. Also, I think they sing You Are My Sunshine at the end of every game, which is Louisiana's state song, so there's something else I like about them. Now sadly, because the coronavirus is going on, some players do not want to play in the Challenge Cup, which makes perfect sense. I'm never going to be like, do it for my entertainment. and. I don't care about your well-being or your kids. Yeah, so some players don't want to play because they're like, what if I get it and then I come back home and then my kid gets it or I don't want to be, you know, without my kid for eight months or I'm not, I don't want to bring my kid to Utah. By the way, this is all happening in Utah. It's not a travel-based thing. And I don't want to be alone with my kid for eight months in a hotel room in Utah. Makes perfect sense. So some players aren't wanting to play, and some players because of their kids, and some players don't want to play just because they don't want to. Megan Rapino just feels like she doesn't want to play. Makes sense. She's Megan Rapino. She doesn't need to. And if even if it, even if you don't agree that they shouldn't be paid the same because of revenue, because more people aren't watching enough because more people watch the men's national soccer team, which lose at everything and even make it to the World Cup. So that's a disgrace. And then, and then we have, okay, let's say, let's say if you don't believe that, we should still keep investing in them because they're the best. Because if, okay, if you find this magical spot in the ground that gives you $30 every time you put in $10, 
you're just gonna go, mm, I don't wanna do it. I put in $10 and then it gives me $30. I don't wanna keep wasting $10. It's an investment. You get something back. We need to keep investing in the women's national team because we keep winning. And I want to keep winning at soccer because we're losing at everything else in, just when it comes to soccer. We need to keep winning at this. We need to keep supporting our women. We need to keep supporting our national women's soccer league. It's stupid. The argument people try to make. You're like, they don't deserve. They deserve a lot more. You know how much they get paid? I'll, I think I'm, I'm talking about how much they get paid in the video. This is just the rant part. They need more money. You keep investing in something so you can get a return. And when we invest into men's soccer team, they don't even make the World Cup. When we invest in women's soccer team, they win the World Cup. So get that. Get figure that that's what's happening. So this is why you invest in women's soccer team. I think that's it. I might just make more of it. That's all I got right now. So yeah, that was a quick quick summary of the National Women's Soccer League. I didn't want to get too far into it just because I didn't think I could do it justice or like sometimes it just gets boring sometimes if you bog down on everything. So I'll just leave links to things I've read and uh, if you want to read them that would be awesome. Be cool. But yeah, that's just some of the important the bug and some of the more important things I thought were cool. So, you know, find the soccer league you want to support. The soccer league. Find the soccer team you want to support. Support more if you want. Support just national women's soccer. Support women's soccer. Support women. How about that? Thank you. Have a good day.